Exactly. So before we begin, we would like to just introduce ourselves really briefly. My name is Sadiq. I'm a master's in translational medicine student at the City College of New York. And more importantly, I'm a brother of a chronic pain patient and my bro because he's been suffering from CRPS for the last three years. So I've had like an insight in terms of what his day-to-day -day life is. And I wanted to come to this challenge just to kind of see if we can develop something that my brother would use or patients like my brother who suffer from chronic pain. Hi everyone, my name is Karan and I'm a medical graduate and also a clinical research student at Mount Sinai. My name is Whitney McFadden. I'm a psychiatry resident here at Mount Sinai, I'm a student in neuroscience as well, and I also have a lot of patients with chronic pain, so this is very relevant to me. Hi, my name is Zainab Hussein, and I'm a medical graduate as well, and currently doing my master's in Mount Sinai. So as a lot of you have already mentioned, chronic pain is really clinically relevant in our community. Um, there are so many impacts, and not just the pain, the pain itself, but loss of function mainly, disabilities, emotional pain, um, stress, and it costs a lot of money. Over $650 billion was spent, was lost due to chronic pain in 2012, so it's a real issue. So that means our community needs an integrative and dynamic tool to monitor and improve outcomes of chronic pain patients through provider and community networks. So what this basically means is that um, our solution is less pain, or less pain, let's go with that. Our solution wants to increase data-driven compliance for self-care. So basically, we want to make sure that chronic pain patients are exercising and being physically active to treat that chronic pain. Because as we all know, exercise does form natural um, painkillers in your body, named endorphins, and that can really help. That might help not just lo loss of, uh, gain back some of their function, but treat that pain. So before we designed it, we wanted to make sure that our, our app uh, would fulfill seven basic functions. So they are to track pain daily, so we wanted to correctly uh, assess pain on a multidimensional scale. We wanted to track activity daily. We also wanted to recommend therapy. We wanted to also have the ability to have health cloud syncing, wearable device compatibility, even a, and also probably a user support system where chronic pain patients can speak, can message other chronic pain patients via our app and patient education ties back with recommending therapy and tips and advice. So now we're gonna show you Less Pain, our prototype. Hi guys, so that's uh, the home screen of the Less Pain. So when a person logs in, he kind of uh, fill out his information there. And the home screen would look something like this where he can report his pain and also have uh, certain uh, options there. Uh, so that, that's the major thing where my goals, where the physician and the patient meets up together and decides the goals. We also want to create on a level basis, like level one, level two, kind of a gaming kind of thing. So it kind of gives self-motivation to progress. And uh, patients, uh, so that would be like my activity chart, uh, charting out how he's been doing over time and, uh, you know, relate to pain with it. Uh, this will be the, my progress page, which can also relate with pain calendar, sleep track, and vitals from uh, wearable devices, which can be inputted in that. And uh, another major thing we would like to uh, integrate is having a community part where uh, people can share their minds, uh, they can connect with other pe people on uh, people in the community with chronic pain, and even appreciate or find motivation from each other. So, I promise there's some more. So here's our, um, we tried to see, match our product against current apps on the market, and we found four main prior arts that were most likely pain diaries, but didn't uh, capture all of the aspects we wanted to with our app. So as you can see, there's a lot of red on that screen. That means they don't really fulfill those six functions that we wanted to do. So commercial potential, there are, plen there are uh, several studies that show that patients, chronic pain patients who use mobile apps to track activity do, pr do pr uh, perform better in terms of lower pain scales. And our plan is to first approach physicians and pain doctors um, to first recommend this app for chronic pain patients that they think might benefit. And hopefully we can increase market size with uh, patients who like using wearable devices. To wrap it all up, basically our, device, our app, Lay Less Pain, uh, checks all the boxes and even some more. It motivates patients, and like Karen said, the gaming aspect in terms of level one, level two, level three, can give them some reason to keep playing the game. Like, if we can create the best device in the world, but if they don't use it, it's useless. So we need them to use that app. We have analytics to give them proof that, hey, look, your function's getting better, so maybe retrain your brain to think that 
I'm having lesser pain. And this is definitely personalized care, and we hope to personalize it even more, perhaps with collaborating with Sinai App Lab. So thank you. Yes, please. My question is similar to my other group. What about a patient who's depressed? How eager are they going to be to use this? I mean, depression is very common in pain patients, especially chronic pain. Are they going to be motivated? Are they going to use it? That's a great question, and it's something that I deal with every day um, with patients who are depressed. And, and oftentimes, you know, what patients are willing to do and what pati patients are interested in doing matters so much. Um, and so the important aspect of this is really the levels. So the levels, if they're taking into account what the patient is willing and able to do and what types of things will work specifically for that patient. Is that patient going to respond to like straight direction, telling them you should do this to get the level? Or is it going to, or is the patient going to respond to what do you think you can do today? And then encourage them to do that and one step higher. So that's a hugely important part of this and that depends on how the patient individually responds. And so the depression part will be a huge part of that. Oh, should I? I like the feature aspect, especially linking activity with the pain. Um, where you are in the last uh, 48 hours, what you did and what you need to go forward. Just one line on that. Uh, you are at a prototype stage or what stage you are in the last 48 hours? So yes, we're, we finished the prototype stage on ProTO um, and we definitely need to go further and make it even better, honestly. Um, but we showed that the functionality does work and the concepts work. So we're just gonna have to program it. We did start from scratch this weekend, <laughs> yesterday. Thank you. Thank you.